Our next caller is Hannah from California. What's up, Hannah? How can we help you? Hi. Um, first, I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you for everything. You guys have changed my life and changed many others' lives, and you guys have made me a better trainer. So thank you guys so much for oh, everything you're welcome. that you're doing. Um, so my question is just regarding powerlifting and the longevity of it. I've been doing powerlifting for about four years now since I was 18, just as a hobby. And now I have decided I want to take it to a more competitive level. I want to compete at IPF Worlds one day. You know, I really want to take this far. But um, an issue I keep running into is trying to figure out how to take care of myself. You know, I've been going to the doctor about certain things and little issues I'm having. And he tells me the best thing is to quit powerlifting yeah. and that it's just hard on the body. So um, I've also heard like you guys talk about powerlifting training, how you guys love powerlifting training, but one rep maxes are just not, you know, the best for your body. Um, but that's a lot of my training. And so my question is, how do I make sure I'm taking care of myself, you know, for the long run, but also pursuing this dream I have of, becoming, you know, a really good competitive high level power lifter. Are you, are you currently following our power lift program? I'm not. Are you following a program or are you just doing your own thing? Yes. I'm, well, I was following a program right now. I took a little bit of a break and I'm about to start a new program next month. Okay. Because I would think that, I mean, hopefully if it's a, a, a good program that you actually shouldn't be doing one rep maxes much at all. In fact, a good program should set it up to where you peak at your meet and you that's where you do your one rep max. Most of your training should be at a much lower intensity. Is it designed that way? Do you know? Yes. Yes, it is. But just getting close to the meet, even like the last two weeks of yeah. doing you no know, one rep or even on competition day, Got that it. adrenaline comes over you and Got sometimes it. your body, you know, really far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Studies on injuries related to sport. So there's, there's two pieces of advice I'm going to give you and, and one comment. Uh, the comment is uh, the typical doctor's advice for anything is to stop doing it. That's not always the best, <laughs> not always the best it's advice. go to button. I mean, you won't hurt anymore. That's for sure. But then you won't power lift anymore. And then, you know, obviously you're going to miss out on, on a big part of quality of life. All right. So here's a pieces of advice that I have for you. So one studies show that one of the, just one of the best ways to avoid aches, pains, and injuries for any athlete, this is general advice now, is to cross train. So mm -hmm. what they find is, for example, that runners who cut out some running and do some cycling, for example, typically don't lose stamina and endurance, but they do reduce their aches and pains. This is true for resistance training as well. So generally speaking, depending on how far out you are from a particular meet, I would recommend doing cycles of bodybuilding style training or, you know, more athletic type of movement. I was going to go in the same direction, but yeah. I was going in more of the performance of like, you know, because it's so, uh, you know, one plane, one dimensional, uh, I would definitely in, like go through a cycle of just trying to get through like, you know, lateral, uh, you know, frontal plane, like more, more planes of motion, uh, to, to reinforce and strength. Yeah. If you look at your season, um, obviously when you're training for a meet, that's powerlifting training, right? But the time before that, when you're, let's say off season, then you could do, like I said, bodybuilding or like a maps performance types type of workout. And then more specifically, mobility work is going to be extremely beneficial. I, 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 mobility work benefits everyone, but boy, does it really benefit powerlifters because powerlifters are constantly pressing their body uh, or, or, or hammering the seams, if you will, because it's the same movements over and over, constantly getting stronger. And if there's a little bit of a deviation in form or technique or a little bit of a mobility issue, the average person might not notice it, but because you're constantly pushing the same exercises, your squat, your deadlift, and your bench press, those can become big issues. Mobility work makes a big difference. So like right now, when you're in, if you're in season, I would definitely do some mobility work every single day, maybe mm -hmm. two or three times a day, 10, 15 minutes, twice a day. That should help a lot. But in the off season, you got to cross train. Don't just power lift all the time. Yeah, I would add to that too. Mobility, unilateral training is going to highlight a lot of those, uh, you know, imbalances and things that, you know, instabilities that may be, you know, under the surface that you might not necessarily pick up on because everything's so bilateral and everything you can do kind of like is is controlled that way. Uh, so to add a little more instability by doing unilateral training will kind of show you uh, maybe some areas of improvement that you can reinforce, and then you're going to feel the difference of that going back 
back into uh, powerlifting. We could also probably get a little more specific on what mobility drills if we know what what uh, what are the injuries or what is the doctor? What are you going to the doctor for? Is it is it hip stuff? Is it ankle? Is it knee, shoulder? What do you got going on? I have, I believe it's a compressed nerve. We didn't find out. Um, the doctor pretty much told me he had no idea, but a lot of tingling um, throughout my body, mostly in my upper back. So because there wasn't really any answer he could give me, he said the best thing is to just stop. Yeah, that that sounds like it's coming from the kind of cervical part of the spine. Um, it's, so you're feeling it down your arm and in the upper body? I'm feeling it in my upper back and then on my legs. Oh, oh, and then oh. down to the legs. Okay. I don't know. So hips and shoulder, hips, yeah. and, hips, hips and shoulder mobility is where like the guys were just recommending every, you know, two, three times a day for 10, 15 minutes. Um, I would love to see you do. So if you don't have prime pro, we need to get you prime pro, uh, you take prime pro and focus on hip stuff and shoulder stuff and do that two or three times a day, every day. Uh, and in addition to some of the advice the guys are already given, I think that you will see a world of a difference from that alone. Yeah. Hannah, when's your competition? I actually had one this weekend. I had to drop out because of my back. So okay. I'm planning to go to nationals in May next of next year. Oh, okay. I'm so glad you did that. Okay. Yeah. So I had no idea that it was a nerve issue. This is something we want to treat a little bit more carefully because when you're talking about a little bit of ankle, you know, pain or joint pain, mobility work and, you know, stretching and that kind of stuff can help. Nerve stuff you don't want to mess with because you could, you could go from tingling to like, oh my God, big time weakness on one side of my body or a lot of pain that takes months to heal. Since we're since we have till May, which gives us a lot of time, I definitely think you should switch your training away from powerlifting. This is your off season right now. I think it would be smart to go really easy and light for a couple weeks, two or three weeks, and then move into something like Maps Performance. Watch the intensity and focus on perfect technique and form. That's that's where I think you should go right now. And after you're done with Maps Performance, if everything feels good. You're feeling strong, then you can jump back into some kind of powerlifting training. If you don't have MAPS performance, we'll send that over to you, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. No problem, mm -hmm. Hannah. Thanks for calling. Thank you. You know, th this makes me want to communicate this particular point. In fact, I was on a podcast yesterday, and this was one of the topics of discussion, which is we often look at maximum performance as the as healthy, right? Mm -hmm. But the truth is, if you're pushing your body to any limit, you are sacrificing longevity and health for performance. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I mean, I do that. There's a quality of life thing that you need to factor in. But if you're trying to be the strongest or the biggest or the rippedest or have the most stamina- or the fastest. Or the fat, you are yeah. going to be sacrificing longevity yeah. well, and health for that. It's good to stretch your abilities and your capacity in that direction. And so, you know, to pursue that is, you know, that's a valid goal. But yeah, you got to realize that uh, everything else sort of, um, you know, gets sacrificed along the way. But you got to come back and reinforce it and, and build out the whole again. So you got to consider, you know, moving in another direction to then benefit everything else. Well, we 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 worship uh, athletes so much. Yeah. Uh, and we, we assume that because they look amazing, they do these great feats that they're extremely healthy. And it's not true at all. Some of the most banged up, beat up <laughs> clients I ever got were people that were athletes most of their life. So their body fat percentage is low because they're so goddamn active. Um, but really that repetitiveness of the same, the same thing, and same just pushing the limits, yeah, same yeah. movements, pushing the limits, going as hard, as fast and as long as you can all the time. Uh, sport, sport is not technically healthy for you. And does that mean, can you intermittently play sports and it, and it actually benefit your life and you be a healthier person? That's yes. And I'm not saying that sports is bad, but we have this misconception that all athletes are really healthy because they have a low body fat percentage or yeah. something. You know? you know, it's Meanwhile, funny. they're redlining the whole time. Yeah, That's totally. It. In fact, if you took the top three professional sports and you averaged out the lifespans, I would bet that they have a shorter lifespan than the average uh, American. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because of football. But even if you took football out, looked at the average lifespan of a professional basketball player and baseball player, at most, they probably match the average American because they offset their active, they're fit, 
they burn calories, but then what offsets that is just pushing well, your body yeah, all let, the time. Let's look at the the top tier athletes now and what they've figured out. Like you got your Tom Brady, you know, you got LeBron, LeBron James. James. Yeah. Like what are they like hyper focused on? Spending a million dollars on recovery. Millions of dollars on yeah. recovery yep. and, and figuring all that out so they have that kind of uh, longevity in their peak performance. Well, and even if Sal's point about uh, longevity isn't true, uh, for sure, uh, the chronic pain you are going to see. Yeah. So like maybe they don't die soon because like, football does. I know the life expectancy of a football player is really low. Um, and maybe there's not much of a correlation to like how long they live, but the quality of their life, you find an athlete who's played sports for 30 years and you're talking about back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, hip pain. They, Dude, I mean, this this hit me. For this hit me like a ton of bricks. I was in my early 20s and I didn't really understand this fully. And I went to this big fitness convention and when I was a young kid, I was a big pro wrestling fan. So like the Iron Sheik and Mr. Perfect and all that stuff. Anyway, they were there at the convention signing autographs. And by this point, these guys are in their 50s and 60s, right? They were, they were, they looked like terrible health. They had poor, I mean, they would get, some of them had, had canes and walkers, could barely move. And I remember looking at my heroes who used to jump off the top rope and do backflips and be like, oh my God, this guy's, in his 60s and he can barely move. And then it dawned on me, like, of course, those yeah. guys were doing crazy crap to their bodies. You can't run like that for too long without suffering the consequences. And that's when I realized, like, okay, it's great to push your body to limits. There's some fun to that, but you are sacrificing longevity. Oh, yeah. that, what was it? The, was it that movie, The Wrestler? Mickey oh, yeah. Rourke? Mickey Rourke? Yeah. Oh, that highlighted it perfectly. No, it did a good job of highlighting yeah. what you're talking about. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.